Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna look at how we can alleviate some of the pressure and the stress on our wrists. We're gonna choose two movements. One is really just a kind of regular gym movement, a bench press. The other one is more of a functional movement, the clean and jerk or the squat, so the, basically the front rack position. Um, let's go to the bench press first. Normally what people will do is like just a relaxed grip, okay? So they won't use their thumb. It'll be basically a false grip. And what that does is if you have a look, if you come up close here, George, all right, I'm gonna go with a false grip here. Look at my wrists, have a look side on. You see that flexion in the wrist there? That's overloading and really I need to be in that position. But with a false grip, it doesn't allow me to because I don't have enough like purchase on the bar and I'm gonna risk dropping it. So that is normal for a lot of people. But what we wanna try and do now is not just wrap that thumb around and over because I'm still in that position, is rotate, okay? When we rotate, if you have a look up close here, all I'm gonna do is just settle that bar a little tiny bit further forward into the palm, and I'm gonna spike those fingertips up, okay? So I'm gonna draw my knuckles backwards. That right there gives me absolute solidity through the wrists. I'm still able to maintain that same range of motion, uh, but I am actually gonna save the wrist there. So as opposed to that, which is quite normal for a lot of people, we're gonna wrap around, rotate forward, sit that back further into the palm, knuckles backwards, spike the fingertips up, we're good to go. And the next movement we're going to look at is the front rack position. So basically here, we'll see this in the front squat, we'll see it in the clean and jerk. Um, one of the things that we very often see, and I think I've touched upon this in other videos, is once you have that bar there, it's quite a restrictive thing. It's going to be set on the clavicle here. It might cut off your oxygen supply a little tiny bit as well. Uh, so it's just something to get used to. But what we'll find is very often elbows are dropped quite low. And what happens there is naturally when I'm holding the bar, there's so much stress on that wrist. So we're gonna try and alleviate that as well. So I can sit it there and I can still breathe, but my elbows are really high there. I'm putting a little tiny bit, if you have a look, a little flexion on the wrist there, but not enough that if I'm here, can you see the difference there? There, compared to that, okay? So what we need to try and do here, all you need to do is develop that flexion, okay? So that there is not a case of, you know, my elbows, I can't get my elbows any higher. It's actually all due to lat flexion. And so what we need to do here is just rest the bar in the clavicle. You may have seen me do this in another video, but it's very, very important. Okay, keep your body square and just drive those elbows one at a time. Once you get proficient there, you're gonna do two at a time right the way through. Once you're in that front rack, if you feel that that's an issue, okay, and you have access to a front uh, a squat rack, take one or two fingers away from it, hook it, get those elbows nice and high. And once you're squatting, make sure someone's there to shout it at you. It's very, very important you're going to hurt your wrist otherwise. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Enjoy it and I'll catch you next week.